Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Frank, your all-knowing gamer, coming at you with another audio commentary of League of Legends. Today we've got two big, big names in the scene right now. Team Dignitas, which you can see spawning on the purple side at the bottom of your screen, versus Mono Esports, who will be spawning blue side and they will be at the top. Now this is going to be a replay, and we will be following the perspective of Olaf, so I do apologize ahead of time for any of the health bar issues that we might run across. For those of you who don't know the, the way the replay system works is um, all the input that's, uh, that Olaf specifically has, who's being played by Nintendude X, if, uh, if he's not looking at it, then the data will not be displayed, so the HP bar specifically will not be displayed, and this is a good example of that right now. But, with that being said, let's get this right underway here to go over the team comp. Olaf, Lee Sin, Janna, Kogma, and Morgana for Team Mono Esports. And on the enemy team here, Team Dignitas, you've got I Will Dominate on Mundo. Ash, Scara, uh, sorry, Scara's Rise, you've also got Soraka and Vladimir here. So this is definitely going to be a doozy of a game here as we've got Zion Spartan on Lee Sin, who's just going to be running across the field here, trying to figure out exactly what he can get done. And then uh, he does actually spot Scarus here so he is going to get the Q, the resonating strike as well as the jump kick follow up and an auto attack off on that rise and that's actually going to be enough damage at this very early level that's going to prompt them to go for this invade here and you can see with that resonating strike being shot out there um, not seeing anybody in that bush as the resonating strike does reveal anyone in the bush. Not going to see anybody there so he's going to be able to take over excuse me, take over this brush here, which is going to lead them to basically a free Wraith camp as well as a free red buff. I have to assume that they're going to leave one Wraith and one mini uh, lizard there, as that will definitely set the Mundo behind, and Mundo has a really, really tough time ganking, uh, especially if you leave him without a red buff, so we're going to see exactly how I Will Dominate is going to compensate for that one, but no kills be going down here, which is usually going to make for a much better game, as there's not going to be too much conflict, as uh, there's not going to be really anybody having too much uh, of an advantage here. You can see here, Nintendude X is going to go in there, leaving that one Wraith, and now he's going to go ahead up here and take this red buff, and like I said, most likely going to leave that Lizard. So I want to go over a couple of the lane matchups here, as we do have Kogma and Janna in that bottom lane, two characters that I think at this point, when this, as, from when this game was played, as I mentioned before, that this is a, uh, a replay file, so from when this game was played, and actually you can see the Lizard going down, uh, I don't think a lot of teams really, really considered the power of Janna and Kogma um, as two separate characters as well as, as a combination. So that's really going to be a lot of problems there. As Nintendo X, uh, or sorry, I Will Dominate, was spotted here going into the enemy's red buff. Is Are they going to take advantage of this though? It does look like Janna, Kogma coming from bottom lane as well as Morgana. And it looks like I Will Dominate does get the smite off there. So if he was looking just to get off the... Uh, take away the experience as well as the gold. He definitely succeeded in that, but he's definitely going to go down here. And who is the red buff going to go on to? This is a double buff and the flash over and no, it looks like Janna will pick up that kill. So I think Kogma was definitely looking forward to taking that as the ability spam on Kogma as well as that red buff with the Janna shield and his W. That would have been absolutely crazy how much damage they could have gotten done. But I think uh, with the coordination being had between these two players who have clearly played together for quite some time, I definitely think they're going to be able to coordinate the slows as well as the auto attacks from Kogma. So definitely look forward to there being a lot more action down at that bottom lane. Up at top lane here, though, it looks like a lot of damage being done here to Voiboy. Boy. Of course, we can't see the HP bars, and one more time, guys, I do want to apologize for that, but um, we can't see the HP bars just right now, but uh, Voiboy Boy getting picked on a little bit there by Zion Spartan as uh, Voiboy was level 2 and Zion was level 3 on Lee Sin, so taking advantage of that early level difference means really the difference between an ability like a full-blown ability or a level 2 in an ability, which can really spell the difference between how the trading is going to go on these engagements. And you can see here, Nintendo is going to be taking up that blue buff as it's not quite the time where he can go without that. So here we go with the shield and the auto attack. Now Janna, I think, is playing this right, although she's a little bit too aggressive here. Now Kogma is going to be forced away from the creep zone, and he's going to actually miss a couple of them. He's going to miss this back one here as well, but... Uh, and that's, that is actually really, really crucial. I think Janna just a little bit too over-aggressive there. I want to note the openers here as well as Boy Boy getting cloth armor and five health potions. 
definitely helps against the Lee Sin and helps against a lot of top laners, but uh, is not going to go with his build. But here we go. We see Nintendo Dex is going to rush in here. Nice pool timing there from the Vladimir and actually not getting E'd by Nintendo X, who has been leveling his axe, actually. So um, he's going to get that extra damage off of that uh, leveled ability there. But here we go again. Nintendo Dex coming in with the axe throw and the E is going to get quite a bit of damage done. But with only the level 1 on the E, it's going to be a difference between 60 damage um, between level 1 and 2. So it's 100 true damage at level 1, 160 at level 2. And now I think there's, it looks like another jump on and the axe throw is going to be missed there because Voiboy turned around and used his Q. But even more characters coming up here as Mr. Paradoxical moving in is going to have her Dark Binding whiffed as Vladimir with a great pool. And if you guys thought that Voiboy only played those bruisers, think again because his Vlad is completely just crushing the attempts up at this top lane. So one thing to note, with Morgana having left mid lane, you have to assume that she's behind in CS, which she certainly is, 10 CS. And that's going to be a major difference if they decide to shop relatively around the same time. Of course, if she shops after the rise, she can just turn things around by sticking in lane a little bit longer, but uh, and then backing a little bit later. But then, of course, that always offsets the uh, the pushability for a rise there. And here we go. It looks like an engagement actually coming in here onto Kogma. Kogma just moving up there, trying to use that slime to get those CS. But Locust doing a great job with a super aggressive Soraka is going to actually get auto-attacked, I think, one, maybe even two more times than uh, she needed to, but uh, still a great job there because she will be able to heal herself back up. Now, we can't see exactly what she's leveling, though, but actually, no fairy charm, and I, this was something to, that I should have noted earlier, um, but I didn't actually notice that. No fairy charm for Soraka with the new um, abilities there. Looks like, oh my god, though, she's gonna get jumped on here. Wow, what a huge amount of damage there, and it is a level 2 reckless swing that's gonna pick that one up, so a great engagement there, and what a great gank from Nintendo to X with Janna even not even being there. Really, really great engagement, and it looks like they're going to be pinging Dragon. It could be a good time, I would say, but with Olaf not having the Madrids, I definitely don't think that's the right way to go right now. Although, with uh, of course, with Soraka being down, could open up a lot of opportunities for that. So we can see here, Mono Esports. Now, uh, if we just take a look at the scores, it is two to nothing in favor of Mono. And both of those kills are... No, both of those kills Olaf took part in, but he doesn't actually have both of those kills. So it looks like they are, however, going to come over here and try to invade. And it looks like I Will Dominate is going to get caught here by the Morgana Dark Binding. And what a crazy amount of damage there with that E. So much true damage. Um, is it actually level 3 yet? No, it is still level 2. Level 2 under Toe as well. Um, of course, he is level 5 right now, but an interesting way to level up your abilities. Um, I'm not sure if I agree with it entirely, but it looks like they are going to run into some issues here as the dragon is going to reset there. Um, and we don't see Rise in the picture right now either. He's he's most likely somewhere around here. Could be in this brush with that ward coverage. I don't know if he's going to be able to get away with this one though. Nintendo Dex is going to be forced to back off here. He's going to have to smite it though. He's going to have to turn around, come back and auto attack some more and smite this. And he will actually pick that up as uh, there's really nobody here to contest that. I'm a cutie pie on Ash. He's going to come around with a ward there actually. Mr. Paradoxical able to save himself his flash in the back of the dragon cage because simply he was just not spotted there and I think even if he was uh, that would have just been a turnaround from Kogma Janna but either way a great job there picking up that dragon so now three kills and the dragon the advantage here so although we can't see exactly those numbers it looks like Zion Spartan though getting ulted on there and really nice shield timing there is going to negate quite a bit of that ultimate damage which when you can negate ultimate damage it's always, always a good thing, especially with uh, such a simple ability and such a short cooldown. So great job there. And he's going to go ahead and rush in here with his W as well, which is always a good call because he knows he's going to get queued and get engaged upon by Voiboy here, who has been so aggressive um, and really doing a great job where I think Lee Sin is just so, so difficult to counter in lane and with Vladimir of all characters um, doing a very, very good job. So it looks like Morgana is going to come up to this top lane here. Will she be spotted though? It looks like Voiboy is kind of playing a little bit more passive now. Yes, it looks like he will run back as Mr. Paradoxical I think realizes what's going on here. And the counter to this is of course Skara is going to use his ultimate and try to push down this wave. 
Um, or rather, actually, he did not use his ultimate. Uh, a little bit of the animations going off there, and a great cleaver there, actually, from I Will Dominate. He's going to pick up that black wraith, or sorry, that back wraith. Excuse me, and uh, he will actually take that down. So some pretty interesting counter jungling, but effective nonetheless. Nonetheless. So here we go. Rise does have blue buff on him, and uh, I think it's been there for a little while now. So that will be, I think, ticking down to at least less than half. But with that catalyst on him as well, he's really going to have that lane sustain as far as mana goes, and just be able to stick around there for quite some time. As uh, it looks like this top lane, now we see two Null Magic Mantles up here on Lee Sin, and that's definitely going to be helping him out against this Vladimir. Most likely going to be going for the Merc Treads, and then following that up potentially with an Aegis. I'm not sure exactly how he's looking to build. There are so many ways that you can build Lee Sin. Um, it's just crazy, so we're going to see exactly which road he's going to take with that one. Now, I will dominate. Looks like he's going to be defending this one. Is he going to be able to get away here? He needs to start ulting right now if he has that online. He's doing an excellent amount of damage, but he waits. The ignite goes off, and he really, really needs to start um, start ulting a little bit sooner than that. Great shield there from Zion Spartan is going to negate the tower shot, which actually could have killed Nintendo, but great job there defending his teammate while he was actually... Um, just coming off of the stun effect from Ash's arrow there. It looks like a great engagement here coming on to Locust as well. And there has been a lot of action happening across the board. One thing we need to note is that while there is a 4 kill advantage, and by the way, I do also want to note that Nintendo here on Olaf has actually uh, been involved in every single one of those kills there. So 4 to nothing the kill advantage, as well as a dragon, so great job there. But we're going to take a look at the CS. While it looks like there's not much going on, hopefully nothing goes down here while I'm taking a look at this, but we do have 79 CS versus 70 down at the bottom lane in favor of Kog'Ma, so Mono Esports ahead there in the jungle. It looks like uh, Mundo is significantly ahead Top lane 61 to 76, so Dignitas ahead there, and 70 versus 87. So it looks like Dignitas across the board, other than bottom lane, is actually winning as in terms of CS. And a lot of times, that's actually what it's going to come down to in the end, is that C those CS numbers. Because while the kills are in their advantage, and a lot of times people will just kind of tunnel vision on that and see just that, that number... Um, it is very important to note that uh, the, the difference in CS can always spell, uh, really start to spell out who's going to end up winning the game. So definitely something to keep an eye on. I'll definitely try to check that again in another five minutes or so, let you get, keep you guys updated. So, uh, let's take a look here at what's going on elsewhere. It looks like Janna, uh, Kog'Ma down at this bottom lane are pairing up here with Nintendo as he's trying to go into this bottom lane and push forward there as the Pink Ward in the opposite brush is always a good call, but I think what Zig needs to do here is start auto-attacking this one. There we go. One auto-attack, two, three, and is the vision good enough here? Um, you can't actually switch sides, but I believe that this vision line here stops right about here, but he pushes in. Ugh, I don't know. I don't know whether that died quick enough. We're going to see. I'll keep my eye on that bottom lane and see what's going on here. But we do see that I Will Dominate is coming into this uh, opposite brush here as well. That's where he was last spotted. He might jump onto Mr. Paradoxical. I don't know when he's exactly going to come out. He could also just be doing some counter jungling as now Olaf certainly has been spotted. And Morgana is going to come in here, try to check that one out, and she's going to find that I Will Dominate has certainly been in that jungle. And he's just going to very happily walk away there with the Heart of Gold on him. And that's actually another thing to compare as well, is those gold gen items, because um, that also adds very much to the gameplay. So you see Olaf here, no gold gens, versus the one gold gen here on I Will Dominate. So uh, even more of an advantage as far as uh, the Mundo versus Olaf situation goes, although certainly the two kills to assists will be very, very helpful for the Olaf. Looks like Mr. Paradoxical pushing in here. Is he going to land the Dark Binding? It looks like. No, he will not. Great placement there by Voiboy. And you have to assume that he's been warding very, very well here. As um, as soon as Morgana came up, even through this backside here, he was still able to tell that she was going to be somewhere around there. So great work on his part. And one thing to note as well, as you can see, Locust and Mono Esports pinging around that dragon, really trying to time out exactly when that's going to come up. As you can see, the timers are going up. Um, one thing to note also is that Janna actually put a dot when the dragon died, and that's actually uh, sh that will show the timestamp for when dragon died. But you really want to point out the names of what happened and whatnot. And it looks like a, a blue seal trying to go off here, and it does go off. So paradoxical, walking away with a free blue buff. 
as Vlad is actually now in the fray as well. So Nintendo decks kind of a bad positioning here as he can't really see even beside him. That's one of the only spots on the map where you just cannot even see what's beside you. So um, he's going to be a little bit caught out there potentially. And here we go. There's another dragon. But the Ash Hawk shot does go in there. And it looks like Skara is going to try to contend, or sorry, it looks like Dignitas is going to try to contend this. Walking in there, I'm a Cutie Pie as well as Dominate. Walking in, trying to get something done. Not going to happen though. And I'm a Cutie Pie getting jumped on there. Great Dark Binding. And that's going to spell Doom with four assists and the kill going to Kog'Maw there. So if there wasn't an advantage now, there certainly is. And when Kog'Maw gets an advantage, that really, really spells trouble. Uh, one thing also to note as far as builds go, you have to assume that this was on a slightly more recent patch as a lot of the pro AD players were talking about how the Triple Doran's Blade, because of the nerf on health, is really not effective. But it looks like down at bottom lane here, not going to be able to pick up a kill there. But uh, like I was mentioning, uh, going for the Triple Doran's Blade because of the nerf is not uh, quite as effective as just going double and then start work starting to work into your late game build because the uh, just the numbers don't work out very uh, effectively and it would take me a couple minutes to explain that but just know that it doesn't work <laughs> quite as well. So it looks like actually Zig going up there dropping down a ward which is kind of funky that uh, the range AD would be buying wards especially when Pixel actually has some wards of, of his own so but Regardless, dropping a ward down there in that tri brush, which is always a good thing. But against I will dominate on Mundo, I don't know. Perhaps against the Shaco, I, I would say it would be a little bit more effective. But maintaining map control is never, ever, ever a bad thing here. Really, that ward is blocking off this tiny path here because this ward here was used for that blue steel, which was very, very effective. Alright, so it looks like Paradoxical and Ryze just kind of duking it out. Ryze really hasn't been involved in anything. He's just been passively farming up. And you can see Ryze really, once he starts building up these items, um, he's going to be going for the Glacial Shroud next, which is going to move into, of course, the Heart of Gold. Once he picks that up, he's really, really going to start beefing up. Um, he's going to start moving from there into per probably the Banshee's Veil first. Although with Olaf and uh, with Olaf Leeson and Kogma being so AD heavy, he's I think he's really gonna want to look into finishing off that Heart of Gold first. But we'll see which way he opts here. So it looks like uh, moving in here, we're gonna push in Nintendo Dex pushing in on this tower and a lot of damage from those cleavers actually going down. Also a great job choosing to go for Morgana over Olaf because of that spell shield, which would have negated a lot of that damage uh, from the cleaver, if not all of it. So great job there. And here we go with a nice tornado pushing in. Kogma really trying to take out this turret. We're reaching the point of the game where Kogma, or rather just any bottom lane, you farmed, you farmed, you farmed, you've gotten yourself to a point where you can really start helping out in team fights. But nice engagement on on, on Cutie Pie there. And, uh, and it might be even better engagement here on Skara as Lee Sin kicking off to the side there. Is he going to get the kill there? Ignite going off on him, so Lee Sin will pick up that kill. However, Morgana in the background there. Dominate's going to pick up a kill. Morgana in the background is going to try to pick this one up, but a great silence there from Soraka really filling out that support role and helping to pick up that kill as Dominate now with the only two kills on his team. Not necessarily, I think, the character that you would want them on. I would say certainly Vlad, Ash, or Ryze are the top three that you would want it on. But never a bad thing to have a fed Mundo as he's going to help create that massive wall for this Ash. And uh, really, really help out that team. I just want to check here, make sure everything's good to go. Okay, I ran into uh, an issue before where the borderless mode just was not activated. Must activate faster, but either way... We've got everything set up here and we're good to go. So like I was saying, that, that front wall with Mundo being so fed is going to be very, very effective. So yeah, like I said, uh, he's, Kog'Maw does have that BF sword. He does have the pickaxe, the triple Dorans. He's really going to be a lot more effective in team fights. Where I think once you're... Bef I, I think as long as you're before a BF sword, somewhere being incorporated in your build as well as double... Uh, or sorry, level 2 boots. I really don't think you're effective enough to start helping out as much in team fights. But now that he's starting to build up there, he wants to. He wanted to crack that tower. And so they did. And uh, 
he's now going to be able to at least input a little bit more into team fights here. Not to mention, he's going to force situations where he can push this up, and then somebody will have to come farm this because it's so early in the game that farm is still super, super important. And then pushing down here, you can counter push on mid and then come back in time, of course, to defend your tower. Always a good play for that bottom lane. But it looks like, is there going to be a good play happening top lane? Zion Spartan jumping on Voidboy here, really keeping on top of him. But Voidboy trying to turn things around, staying, I think, a little bit too close to Zion Spartan on Lee Sin, but still gets a lot of damage done. And with that Will of the Ancients, he's going to be able to just heal himself back up there. Of course, the HP bars are not necessarily as um, up to date as they need to be, but uh, still, he I have to assume healing up so much of that damage and getting actually ulted there, as I think uh, Lee Sin here does want to go back. Blue buff being stolen as well. So that's two blue buffs now not going on Rise. And when Rise is in still in lane phase and he doesn't want to uh, leave and go roaming and stuff. He needs that blue buff. He does have a tier of the Goddess and Catalyst, which is going to sustain him. But with those super low cooldowns, um, he really, really wants that blue buff. But um, now that turret is going to go down. So Sarah is going to be certainly able to defend a lot easier from this backwards position. But that's now two towers, two dragons, four kills. And uh, I still assume that the CS is in favor here. But I'm a cutie pie actually jumping in. Getting himself caught, though. That arrow really really ineffective but he's now forcing his team to start chasing down there and Kog'Maw getting some great ultimates off doing hundreds and hundreds of damage there and Skara almost getting caught by a dark binding as now Dragon is going to be surrendered here Ash just with a really terrible engagement there I think just putting up that arrow a little bit too soon and a great great black shield from Morgana making sure to alt or sorry to black shield that frontal character in Olaf and uh, really just take the entire ash arrow to the face no damage no nothing being done no stuns no anything so great job there making sure to keep this team uh, alive and well though Mr. Paradoxical in the background here is going to be taking uh, or is going to be a very very low here who's the dragon going to go down to we're going to be taking a look Who's it going to go down? And it looks like I Will Dominate did pick that one up. So a great job on his part. And he's going to walk away safe and sound. Of course, Mundo always going where he pleases. And where he pleased there was just into the field, taking down that dragon in the midst of four char enemy characters being there. So nice work there. And he will walk away with a great bad boon to his team now only one dragon the advantage and five kills and if we take a look again here at cs i said five minutes it was more like nine but all that action too crazy but with uh mono esports gone back let's take a look here 78 to 103 so that's one for dignitas ash is 153 versus 155 um that's kind of the same we'll call that a tie um rise in mid lane 152 versus 156 little bit ahead there and then 180 versus 150 so if really you take a look at the two major gaps it's top lane and in the jungle and they are both in favor of dignitas so that certainly balances things out i don't think it balances it out as much as one dragon two turrets and the four now five kills but um certainly trying to find their way to hold on here and uh really try to take this one down and we will see if that's going to be the case as it looks like there is a little bit more to this game, so uh, definitely more action coming, guys, as there is a lull in the action, though. Everybody's just kind of chilling out, going back, shopping. It's a little bit scattered, though. Nobody really making these big team plays, although, just as I say, it looks like Janna with Oracles and Morgana moving up to this top lane here. Janna's going to lead the way, try to find if there are any wards spotting this one out. Nothing yet, but here we go. Voidboy coming in there. Dark Binding's going to go off as well as the... Uh, tormented Soil and a really nice placement there on the Tormented Soil. Ultimate coming up from Morgana as well and with no flash on Vladimir is he going to be able to get away? It looks like no. Trying to heal himself back up. Morgana with the, the Tormented Soil is going to get in there but with Rise coming in, the ultimate whiffs or or rather catches the Janna with the Black Shield so another great Black Shield. Nice Dark Binding as well and Morgana really doing work onto this team here. I will dominate. Looks like he's going pretty low but with the ultimate going to be able to heal back up. Locust is going to get picked off. Overextending a little bit too far and the splash damage not enough to pick up Janna. Nice Kog'Maw ultimate is going to finish off that, that Mundo and here we go. A nice resonating strike but a little bit too over dedicated there with the Dark Binding just barely missing the Ash. Really, really great team fight <clears throat> and very one-sided actually getting one kill or sorry one death for their three kills a very very good trade Now it looks like going for Baron here 
<coughs> Excuse me, I don't know if that's the best play. Scar is going to come down. And is he going to overextend here? Yes, he is. The Dark Binding did. Oh, Lord. The melt, the melt, the melt. So it looks like now we're going to start taking out Baron. And it's going to be free as the wind blows because Scara getting picked off there. If it wasn't enough to have not only their jungler, but two other characters having gone down there, now Scara being freshly killed is certainly going to spell a free Baron here. Summoner heal being popped out there uh, just to ensure that it's going to go down. I don't think it was actually necessary. And in fact, I kind of disagree with the play with using Summoner heal there a lot. Um, you can always kite Baron around. It has um, an AI that you can abuse. But... Uh, like those fighter games where you just can use the same combo over and over and the computer will always react the same way. It's the same with Baron. It's always going to target the front almost character and they definitely had enough health there I think to be able to deal with that. But I digress guys. Look at this ward control. This is the epitome of, a, of really great team play. First of all, the ward control, yes, that's fine and dandy, but when you're looking at exactly where the wards are, you've got, you can see three in the same screen, one over here and one, of course, down to the riverside, but it's all on this left side of the map. The reason that is, bottom lane's pushing up, mid lane can be air very easily be defended, and uh, this top lane is really the target, so they want to make sure that if anyone's going to be coming through the jungle, they can catch them with either a dark binding or just run away if they need to. Whatever they need to do, that control is there. Front turret goes down, and now we're going to see potentially a switch off to the right side as now more warden going down there. And this is just taking control, I think, of the center of the map and really just enabling them to push in there. And as just as I say it, that's what they're going to do. So in they go. Mr. Paradox is going down a little bit low, but a nice catch on Locust. Going to get Locust down very, very low with just the... QW combination, really great work there, and Zion Spartan looks like he's going to run uh, down here, choosing his W to that ward, kind of revealing that there's a ward there, but I don't think that uh, Dignitas is necessarily going to be doing anything about that anytime soon. Um, Mr. Paradoxical, kind of in a cutesy position, looking for the Duck Binding, is he going to land it? No, he's not. Boy Boy kind of just randomly moving around there is going to be enough to dodge that but uh, mid turret now second layer going down here 11 to 3 the kill so there's definitely an advantage and the baron and those dragons that dragon advantage they need to use this right now so they've gotten what, two turrets down with the baron buff now they're going to head down to bot lane and potentially right afterwards head to top as baron buff is regenerating them quite quickly on top of uh, actually no there is no healer but uh, it looks like there are Oceans running? No, just lifesteal. Actually, uh, every character has lifesteal except for Janna, so not bad. So there we go, pushing in. No turrets now. Five turrets they have down and no turrets down for themselves. Zion Spartan looks like he's going to get picked on here, and he's really been overextending. I have to say, a little bit too far, getting caught out by those Rise Ws, just snared, locked down, and just unloaded on by quite a few hits long range hits from Vlad, Ash, Mundo, all those crazy, crazy damages. And here we go. Scar looks like he's going to get caught out here. Kogma with the ultimate is going to force the flash from Scar. And here we go. A great ultimate from Vladimir getting onto five characters. Is it going to be enough here though? Zion Spartan goes down very low with the, but with the black shield and the Janna shield. Shirelius gets them away just so cleanly and off they go taking out that turret taking out those kills morgana looks like she's going to step in here dark binding goes down and what's she going to do here the ultimate goes down as well is it going to be a kill here oh the kill the last second there flashing forward away from the vlad i think a little bit too assertive of a play there or rather too um a little bit too scared of a play really for her to be flashing away there. I think she could have even baited off to the right side into her team which was down on this path here and if Vlad overextended it would have been his mistake rather than Morgana's in using that flash but they walk away very cleanly picking up another kill on I'm a cutie pie and it looks like Dragon's gonna go down here as well. So these guys just on the ball now gonna take a two Dragon advantage with Baron buff and five towers those global objectives are really really piling up now sorry six towers the advantage now so in case you guys needed to know that's spelling 900 not to mention the excess close to 600 a little bit more than 600 gold there so uh so 600 900 1500 roughly 1600 gold in global objectives right now per player that's 
a needlessly large rod if that's what you're going for. That's a BF sword if that's what you're going for. That's a lot of things being spelled out um, depending on what character you're going for here. So really just dominating this field right now as uh, kind of I will dominate getting played off here as no, 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 Mono Esports will dominate this one. And uh, it looks like they will certainly do that in pretty crushing fashion here. Dark Binding, a little bit over aggressive yet again. Uh, Baron's not going to be up, I think, for a little while here as it just now ran out. So looking for more pushing and we definitely need to see more warding being done here as six wards sitting on Janna right now. That's definitely going to go to this left side, and it's it's going to go to the side where there's towers. There's no towers on this side, or sorry, where there's more towers. No towers on this side. There's a ward. Probably a ward here. Maybe even there. Um, we'll see exactly how it goes. I don't know if they're necessarily as threatened by this pathway here, but it is going to go up there anyways, and uh, they're just going to walk in pretty cleanly, take this one down. In comes another push here, guys, and this could very well spell the end of the game. Great dark black shield there. She's going to need that off of cooldown for when this next engagement happens. Potentially to dodge a Vladimir ult, the Rise Bind. That I think that's really the one they do want to dodge. Um, a lot of damage going out there. Kogma landing those ultimates very, very nicely. And uh, here we go, guys. Pushing in. This creep wave could spell the end of it. Red Elixir is on Olaf, so they're definitely looking to end this one right here, right now. What's going to happen though? Dark Binding going off and it is going to catch Armor Cutie Pie. Will it go down? Yes, it will. Resonating Strike. It will pick that one up. Vladimir Ultimate catching five characters. One with the Black Shield, of course. Not going to be too helpful there. Vladimir Ultimate goes off. I will dominate in the front lines. Is he going to be able to do enough? No. Boy Boy still trying to pick away with that Q. Not going to do enough though. It's looking like Dark Binding trying to go out there. And Mr. Paradoxical has landed so many in the Dark, dark, bind or, yeah, dark Bindings. It really uh, is not a bad play for her anymore to just whiff or throw those out and whiff them. Because look at how many are landing the ultimate as well. Scar looks like he's going to go down. Morgana's going to take him out with the end of it, her ultimate. And is she going to be able to do any more damage here to the rest of these characters? They're baiting them out, it's looking like. But no Zig with no mana left. Are they going to be able to get away here? Mixed or, or sorry, Ma... Mono Esports Pixel. Oh, the whiff on the Ash Arrow. And let's watch that one all the way through. The follow through. Not clipping anything. Going to Mount Everest. And potentially hitting a climber off in the distance. But not going to hit any characters or anything that she really wanted to. Resonating Strike also missing there. But that doesn't go quite as far there. But great escape coming out from these guys. And I cannot say how one-sided this game has been going. Baron's now up, and if they force a Baron fight, they will win that fight. The global gold is through the roof. I'm not going to do the math anymore. Just so much global gold right now. Um, they even have a, a Nexus turret down when they have zero turrets taken out. Um, I think uh, there was an interview done about by uh, with Skara where he always mentions how important it is to, to choose your champions and he always says that that's what Dignitas has been struggling with. And you can see another just random binding there with the pool underneath. Just missing, but no big deal. And he always says that uh, Dignitas actually struggles with selecting the proper counters and they don't realize it till after they've already excuse me, started the game, so that could be the case here, but they are certainly getting crushed by, I think, the underdogs coming into this one in Mono Esports, so here we go, Zion Spartan's gonna start that one up, he's gonna be tanking this damage, Dominate, looking potentially to flash over and steal this one, will he be able to get it done? Actually, no flash, he does have exhaust, silly me. Baron's gonna go down there, Cleaver is actually gonna land, but uh, it's just gonna hit a lowly... Mono Esports crushing victory looking like player. And uh, in comes the push. Inhibitor in the middle is potentially going to go down here. Mr. Paradoxical baiting out these enemy characters. What's going to happen here? Who's going to engage first? And who's really going to go down first is the real question. As the tanky front line for that Kogma looking so, so scary right now. Kogma still a little bit tanky himself. Has an extra 160 HP with those Doran's Blades. Not really that much, but here we go. The Tornado does pop up. Boy, boy, where's the Vlad Ultimate? It's going to catch three characters in the front line. And how much damage is going to get done? Pixel with a great ultimate getting the full duration of healing. Paradoxical in the front lines. Not going to be able to land the rest of the ultimate. But it looks like the follow-up from her team is going to happen. 
Dave Locust is going to go down super, super low here. Cogron's going to pick up that kill. Cutie Pie going down. And don't you look away because Skara is going to go down as well. And this is going to be the end of the game. GG's coming out all around. GG well played even coming out from Paradoxical who's going to win this game uh, with his team. And it looks like they're going to be moving on for the, re the rest of this tournament. I believe there was a loser's bracket. So if you guys want more information on the rest of the games, this is my IPL uh, trial video. So... Uh, if you guys want more information on the rest of the games, definitely check out IPL. This was from IPL4, and what a crushing victory from Mono Esports. Again, I cannot say uh, how much I think the audience was expecting Dignitas to come out with this one. I tried to hold back my own personal you know, dispositions, but wow. Mono looking like a powerful, powerful force in this tournament. And you know what? I'm done this cast. I hope you guys enjoyed. I'm going to go watch the rest of the tournament because this was a wild one. So if you guys like my stuff, come check me out later. But thanks for watching, guys.